The Port Arthur Historic Site is a significant Australian convict settlement located on the Tasman Peninsula in Tasmania. It is recognized as one of the Australia's most important heritage sites and is also a UNESCO World Heritage listed property. The site is known for its well-preserved buildings and ruins which offer a glimpse into the harsh convict past of the region. Hello friends, we are the Diversity Travelers. Please join us on a day-long walking tour of the Port Arthur Historic Site. It was a long day. We covered nearly 12 km and made around 18,000 steps while recording this magnificent site in 8K Ultra HD. We'll cover the whole site including the most significant buildings with bit of a narrated history. After coming out of the visitor center, we got the first sight of the penitentiary building at the Port Arthur, one of the most significant and imposing structures within the Port Arthur historic site. Within the Port Arthur historic site, there is a water fountain and garden area that adds beauty and tranquility to the overall atmosphere of the site. Our video starts at this beautiful garden and ends here in the late afternoon. So we'll do a full circle. So please join and walk with us. The water fountain is a central feature within the garden area. It is typically designed as a decorative structure that provides a source of water. They offer a space for reflection and appreciation of the natural elements amidst the rich history of the Port Arthur historic site. Port Arthur was established as a timber station in 1830, but soon transformed into a penal settlement in 1833. It served as a place of secondary punishment for convicts who had re-offended after arriving in Australia. The isolated location of the site, surrounded by water on three sides, made it an ideal prison with limited chances of escape. The penitentiary building was constructed between 1843 and 1853 and served as a place for punishment and incarceration for the convicts. It was designed to house around 480 prisoners and consisted of four wings radiating from a central hub. The building was intended to install discipline and deterrence through its design and strict regime. The penitentiary building was an impressive example of Georgian architecture. It features sandstone walls, large windows and a symmetric layout. The architecture design aimed to impose a sense of order and control over the inmates, with separate cell blocks and space for various activities. Life at Port Arthur was notoriously harsh and punitive. Convicts endured rigorous labor, often engaged in tasks like timber cutting, stone quarrying, and brick making. The settlement implemented a system of strict discipline, including silence, separation, and hard labor, intended to deter convicts from further wrongdoing. Solitary confinement and flogging were common forms of punishment. Since the closure of the prison in 1877, efforts have been made to preserve and showcase the Port Arthur historic site. Today, it stands as a living museum, allowing visitors to explore the buildings, learn about the convict experience, and gain insights into Australia's colonial history. Guided tours, historical reenactments, and interpretive display provide a comprehensive understanding of life at the site.
The penitentiary building at Port Arthur is a powerful testament to the penal history of the site and offers visitors a glimpse into the lives of convicts during the colonial era. Its imposing presence and architectural features evoke a sense of the past and provide a somber and thought-provoking experience for those exploring the Port Arthur site. The Port Arthur Historic Site encompasses a vast area and including numerous buildings and ruins. Some of the notable structures including the penitentiary, the separate prison, the commandant house, the church, the guard tower and the convict church. These buildings reflect the different aspects of life at the settlement ranging from punishment and incarceration to religion and administration. The separate prison is a significant feature of the Port Arthur historic site. It was a revolutionary penitentiary designed to implement a new form of punishment known as the separate system. This system aimed to reform convicts through solitude and reflection. Inmates were confined to individual cells, isolated from one another, and forced to work and live in silence. This strict regime aimed to break their spirit and encourage them to repent and change their ways. The English elm tree at Port Arthur is a significant and iconic natural feature within the Port Arthur historic site. The English elm tree is estimated to be over 150 years old, making it one of the oldest trees at Port Arthur. It has grown to an impressive size with a wide canopy and a height. The English elm tree is located within the grounds of Port Arthur historic site near the penitentiary building. It stands as a prominent landmark. The English elm tree has historical significance as it witnessed the various events and changes that occurred at Port Arthur throughout its existence. It stood during the time of the penal settlement and the subsequent transition to the site into a historic landmark. The tree serves as a living connection to the past and a witness to the history that unfolded at Port Arthur. The short cruise or the ferry ride at Port Arthur provides a unique and scenic way to access the historic site, as it is situated on the Tasman Peninsula in Tasmania. The ferry ride offers visitors a memorable experience and enhances their journey to this significant heritage destination. During the ferry ride, passengers are treated to stunning views of the coastline, waterways and surrounding natural beauty of the area. The Tasman Peninsula is known for its rugged cliffs, pristine beaches and diverse wildlife. As the ferry transverse the water, visitors can enjoy the picturesque landscape, capturing memorable photos and taking the unique environment. From the ferry, we watched the Isle of Tate, a small island that served as a burial ground for the Port Arthur Penal Settlement. 
the Isle of Date was established as a cemetery for the Port Arthur penal settlement in 1833. It was used to bury convicts, military personnel, and other residents of the settlement, including women and children as young as age nine. The Isle of Date is significant as a representation of lives and deaths of those who were part of the Port Arthur penal settlement. It serves as a tangible reminder of the harsh conditions and the hardship endured by convicts and other living in the settlement during the era. After the short cruise, as the ferry approaches the Port Arthur historic site, passengers gain a captivating perspective of the settlement from the water. The vintage point offers a different view of the buildings, ruins and the landscape compared to the experience on the land. It allows visitors to appreciate the strategic location of the site and its historic significance as a penal colony. The Port Arthur had a significant population of Irish prisoners during its operation. During the 19th century, Ireland experienced political unrest, economic hardships, and social upheaval, leading to a significant number of Irish people being convicted and transported to Australia. Many of them were involved in political activities, rebellions, or crime related to poverty and land issues. As a result, a considerable portion of the convict population at Port Arthur was Irish. William Smith O'Brien's Yellow Cottage. It's a very iconic building on the top of the hill that you can see from anywhere on the Port Arthur historic site. It was originally built as a stable, but was turned into a cottage for a convict political prisoner, William Smith O'Brien. He was a member of the British Parliament and a leader in the Young Ireland movement. He was arrested after leading an unsuccessful rebellion. Eventually, he accepted government's ticket of leave and went back to UK. The Irish convicts were known for their strong spirit of resistance and rebellious tendencies. There were instances of Irish prisoners participating in escape attempts, act of defiance, and even organized uprisings. One notable event was the 1842 Irish Rebellion at Port Arthur, where a group of Irish convicts staged a protest their treatment, resulting in violent clashes with the authorities. The semaphore station at Port Arthur was established in 1841, making it one of the earliest telegraph stations in Australia. Its primary purpose was to relay messages between the Port Arthur settlement and the Mount Nelson signal station near Hobart, the capital of Tasmania, which is approximately 60 km away. We hope that you have watched our Mount Nelson signal station video. You will learn more about this communication in that video. The semaphore system allowed the rapid transmission of information without the need of physical messengers or written correspondence. The Port Arthur semaphore and signal station played a vital role in communication network of the time, allowing for the exchange of information including news, official correspondence and urgent messages. It provided a vital lifeline for the isolated settlement and contributed to the efficient operation of the penal colony. However. The advancement in telegraph technology, particularly the introduction of the electric telegraph, the semaphore system became obsolete. The Port Arthur semaphore and signal station ceased operations in 1877, when the telegraph line reached the area, offering a faster and more effective means of communication. After coming down from the hill, we visited some of the officers' houses at Port Arthur. The officers' houses at Port Arthur were residential buildings constructed to accommodate high-rank officials and their families within the penal settlement. Today, the officers' houses at Port Arthur provide a glimpse into the past, allowing visitors to explore and understand the living conditions of the officers and their families. Obviously, that was pretty high standard 
compared to the very harsh condition the convicts were facing. Some of the houses have been preserved and restored, while others may exist as ruins or partial structures. They contribute to the overall historical narrative of the Port Arthur site and provide a tangible link to the people who played significant roles in the administration of the penal settlement. We always need to learn the history, good way and bad way. Both sides of the story is always equally important. The ruins of the church at Port Arthur are a significant feature of the Port Arthur historic site. The church was constructed in 1836 and served as the main place of worship for the Port Arthur Penal Settlement. It was designed by the colonial architect John Lee Archer and built by the convict laborers. The church was intended to provide religious services for the growing population of the convicts, military personnel, and the free settlers in the area. Following the closure of the penal settlement in 1877, the church fell into despair and was left to deteriorate. The roof collapsed in 1928, further damaging the structure. Over time, nature and weather took their toll on the building, resulting in the partial ruin that stands today. It was a magnificent sight. We spent a fair bit of time and it was really nice to think about all the history over the last 200 years that happened here. Today is just a ruin. Port Arthur Historic Site witnessed several tragic events during its history. One of the most significant and most infamous incidents was the Port Arthur Massacre, which occurred in 1996 when a gunman opened fire on visitors, resulting in deaths of 35 people. This event led to the significant changes in Australia's gun control laws. From the ruins of the church, we could see the water fountain, the spot where we started our walking tour this morning. So we took a moment and looked at the beautiful site. It was pretty, tranquil, also reminded us about the dark history that it experienced over so many years. We walked back through the beautiful garden. The garden looked stunning in the late afternoon sunlight. And at the end of the garden, we could see the penitentiary building once again in bright golden color. Reflection of the sunlight on the sandstone building was just stunning. So friends, the Port Arthur historic site offers a unique opportunity to learn into Australia's convict's past and serves as a reminder of the hardships endured by thousands of individuals. So at the end of the day, we took our time to stood there and watch the penitentiary building once more. We thought about the dark history that occurred here in that building and in the surrounding areas. Although our walking day was so nice, so beautiful, we really enjoyed the site, but experience was truly thought-provoking. We highly recommend you to visit Port Arthur Historic Site if you are visiting Tasmania. We really appreciate your support by watching our travel videos and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Goodbye until the next video.